So in this problem, we have a glass box with a weight of 165 newtons on a smooth slope inclined at 29.1 degrees to the horizontal. So we can draw our horizontal, and we can say 29.1 degrees. We said that there is no friction present. What is the acceleration? So I get a lot of complaints in physics that the problems on the test aren't exactly like the problems I did in the class. And that's the whole point of higher level thinking, that you are not just able to repeat the exact same steps, but you're able to apply the knowledge to new and different situations. So you need to be able to look at any problem like this and be able to draw your own free body diagram and be able to draw your own conclusions based off your free body diagrams. So here's our box and here's our weight. And here's our normal force. There is no friction. So we can break our normal force into x and y. Fgx, Fgy, and this is 29.1 degrees. And you can see that it would not be possible for this situation to be at equilibrium because there is no friction force to balance out this x. It wouldn't be possible. It has to be accelerating. So we can solve for our equations. If we talk about what's all going on, some of the forces in the x direction does not equal zero because it equals the net force. And in this case, the net force is just equal to Fgx because it's the only force. So Fgx is equal to mass times acceleration, and acceleration is equal to Fgx divided by our mass. So you can see in this problem that you don't actually have to do anything with FGY. You don't need it because you need the X and you need the mass. You can, you can see that Y is in equilibrium so that this force is equal to this force. But you don't need any of that information so we're going to leave it off for now. But we do know that we're going to need mass. So while I'm here, I can say mass is equal to the weight divided by 9.8 to give us 16.8 kilograms. So now we can look at this triangle and we want to know this. It is opposite so we're going to use so. So sine 29.1 is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. We can do our math to see that our FGX is equal to 80.2 newtons. And now we can solve for our acceleration using the equation we derived. Equals 80.2 newtons divided by 16.8 kilograms. And if we look at our problem, you might see that the numbers I gave you have three significant figures, but we also used 9.8 to get from here to here. So our answer needs to only have two significant figures. We have to remember about that 9.8. And we did. We have an acceleration of 4.8 meters per second squared. So you should be able to look at any free body diagram and come up with this kind of information.